time for one of my favorite sessions of the month. It's our weekly, uh, monthly chat with Tava Sofsky of the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. And this week, uh, this month, we're joined by Chelsea Cope, local musician. Hi. One of my mm -hmm. favorite local musicians. Ladies, thanks so much for stopping in. Mm -hmm. Tava, always good to see you. Chelsea as well. Chelsea, at the end of this segment, will be performing a song off the Black Watch Christmas album, which probably has a specific name album-wise. Uh, this is like the know, sixth version of this. I it's the sixth, so I believe. So which is we'll fantastic <laughs> stuff. We'll hear from her at the end of this. Uh, Tava, always good to see you. And we're going to kind of recap 2016 in film and music, and it was a very productive year for you. It was very productive, and I think um, our little monthly session started, we were just talking about um, back this summer when we had American Ninja Warrior in mm -hmm. town, um, and uh, it's just it's just transformed um, into this great conversation we've, we get to have with you every month, so thank you for Well, we having... certainly enjoy that, thank you. Yeah. And yeah. that's an example of uh, the work that your office does, is mm -hmm. to promote local musicians, uh, local filmmakers, but then mm -hmm. to also to attract from the national side of things, things like a NBC production. Right. So as most of you know, we have the uh, film rebate program, which was renewed in 2014 for 10 years. And one of the notions behind that, as a reminder, um, is to was to recruit television as well as feature films, um, recruiting people from out of state, but also allowing local filmmakers to utilize that. Whatever filmmakers spend in state, they get a, a up to 37 percent cash rebate. So it's a very, um, very competitive, very great incentive for all filmmakers to use. And so for the first time ever this year, um, 2016, we actually had three television um, productions come to town. So one being American Ninja Warrior, um, another being an Oklahoma City, it's called Oklahoma City Project is the working title. It's a reality show. Um, by, what can you tell us about Bravo. that, Tava? I can't tell you anything come yet. On. Nathan Poppy's been trying to get that out of me, but as a no, good reporter should be. It will roll out in 2017 as well as American Gods. Okay. Um, and that is, is the series on stars, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Neil Gaiman wrote, um, wrote the novel and this was um, adapted to, um, to a television series. Uh, Fremantle Media was looking for a place to set up shop for um, season after season and when they looked at Oklahoma um, we really really wanted to be able to accommodate them for the entire show however our rebate program is still smaller um, and growing hopefully over the years it will grow but um, we were able to get them here for a week and so out where, of the where did they season, shoot at? They, they hubbed out of Toronto um, they have larger sound stages there and a bigger um, rebate program, a, an incentive program. And so, unfortunately, we only got them here for a week. But I will say that it was a very positive step in the right direction to have um, television here. And it gave our local crew also great experience mm -hmm. and put a lot of our locals to work, um, local businesses. They were here for a long period of time and they filmed all over the state. So well, that's and, something exciting to look forward and to. And that's some of the collateral, you know, rising tide lifts all boats type thing. When an NBC mm -hmm. is here for the American Ninja Warrior, hotels, restaurants, they hopefully see the benefit of extra cast and crew here. Absolutely, absolutely. And this year was phenomenal. We, we actually doubled the number of productions that came. So last year in 2015, we had eight productions. This year we had 16. And what do you mean by productions? Well, to television or, or film okay. projects. So meaning that um, that many productions actually applied to use the incentive and then utilized it and filmed. Um, and so we had uh, Casey Twinter and Jeff Robison's project called Ascent of Rain and Lightning, which they yeah. did rudderless. Um, they filmed, we had, um, uh, I have my little cheat sheet here, yep. but we had, well. um, we had, uh, uh, actually, we actually have some exciting things to announce from just recently this year. Some of the productions that actually filmed earlier last year got distribution. So The Veil, uh, which was Brent Ryan Green's project, and Let Me Make You a Martyr, which filmed in Tulsa, okay. um, Teyada. Um, so those, are, and then Great Plains actually filmed here, and that was on Lifetime. So there were several that, I mean, they don't just make the films, they actually get into the theaters as well, and so it's fun to announce those kinds of things, but, um, Well, yeah, that's a good so, segue right there. Speaking of yeah. films that make it into the theaters, Rudderless, which, as you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. the William H. Macy movie, uh, mm -hmm. you were in. What was that like? Yeah. <clears throat> I still tell people to this day it felt like a dream, because it just, it happened so quickly, and, and, um, 
whenever I was asked to participate, I don't even think I realized what it was, you mm -hmm. know, obviously. So um, they're just like, here's the room, please bring a guitar and sing. And so how, yeah, how did you get involved mm -hmm. in that? Did you audition <clears throat> for it? Yeah, a girlfriend of mine, um, she worked for a, um, a company that casted people and, and all kinds of things around Oklahoma. Um, and so she just came up to me at an event, a musical event um, around town and said, hey, I really think you'd be great for this part. They need a, two sisters at the time um, to play music. So my older sister actually tried out with me. Rachel? I don't think I've told people that because she'd probably kill me, but yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> she did. And, um, and so we auditioned um, in Norman uh, with Chris Freihofer. And then I got a call back and it was like, you know, please come here, bring a guitar again and, and whatnot. And I, I remember waiting in the in a room and then they're like, we're ready for you. So I walked in there and um, it's just a little small carpeted room and it was like William H. Macy and all the producers and I had no idea who was gonna be in that room. So uh, I remember looking down and grabbing my guitar and realizing I didn't bring a pick and they were pretty far away. So I ended up getting this huge blister on my finger because oh, no. <laughs> I was trying oh, to play play out so loud. But it was yeah. it was a, it was shocking to walk into that room and just there they are. So stretched awesome. local. You're you're on stage. Mm -hmm. You're you're in the movie playing basically you, singer songwriter. Yeah, yeah. I mean the role was was not far off from my daily lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how many days uh, did it take out of your life doing this? Um, I think overall I worked I worked on it. Um, I'd say. A little over a month. Um, luckily, at the time, I had a really great job where I would just call my boss and be like, "I just got an email. I have to be there at 5 a.m. the next day. I can't make it into work." And he was super supportive, so that was really nice. Um, but yeah, it was just random. They would add me in scenes last minute, or you know, and I and they were really great. Casey and Jeff are great. I think they um, they have a high level of respect for local everything, local mm -hmm. artists and all that. So um, they ended up adding me in scenes kind of throughout randomly to give me an opportunity to be in the movie more. So We were chatting with Casey uh, last time or a couple times ago about the fictitious bar that was created. The yeah. whole time I'm watching Rotorless, I'm thinking, where is this bar at? And he's yeah. like, oh, no, that doesn't ex <laughs> actually still exist anymore. But I thought it did. And I went to Guthrie recently, and I, and I was asking people on the street where it was, because I was driving around in circles, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's this way. but. I never found it. So I never found it. Maybe it like went back into the ground or something. It's top secret. I'm not sure. But. Well, Tava, that's an example of the the pool of talent that we have in this market that I'm mm -hmm. sure you are uh, promoting as well. Uh, crew, but then also local musicians as well. Right, and um, which reminds me something that we started this year, which was really incredible, um, is a networking and mentoring mm -hmm. series for filmmakers and music makers. And so we kicked it off in the spring with our film, a film-focused event. Uh, we brought in a producer who actually has produced two films here. He's an Oklahoma City native, but he's also a studio executive. So he has a passion for making films in Oklahoma and helping mentor, you know, the filmmakers that are that are working today. And um, it is amazing. Uh, almost weekly, I'm connecting. Our office is connecting filmmakers, writers. Um, mostly writers and young directors with him at Mar Vista. Um, that's pretty unique and special. And then we did a uh, music-focused event this fall with David Macias, who we brought in from 30 Tigers. And same thing, just connecting people. There's, we're basically building additional you know, pipelines or conduits to Nashville and Hollywood um, and creating relationships with people. Yeah, and exciting. they're not only bringing projects here and wanting to create you know, music um, here or films in Oklahoma, but they want to support and help our filmmakers. So that was, that was a huge success. So we'll continue that in 2017. Those events are, are great for the producers yeah. to speak, but then also for the locals to ask questions yeah, and interact. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and we followed up um, while we while the, our guests were in town, we actually had, one was a breakfast, one was a dinner um, with a select, I think we had, it was just a huge dinner with like tw about a dozen locals who we sort of drew names from a hat really, at people that had come to the event and they got to sit for a few hours and just oh, pick wow. their brains. Yeah. Hence the mentoring um, side of things, lots of emails and business cards were exchanged and um, it's all good. And then um, another cool thing that we did in 2016 when we go to Los Angeles in April for the big uh, Film Commissioner's International Locations trade show, we do something out there called an Okie Roundup. And so we literally round up as many expats cool. as we can. And there are a lot in LA. Mm -hmm. 
and um, we have that we've done it for two years in a row we'll do it again in the spring and it's really just to point people that are working actively in the film industry in LA mostly LA maybe some New York or Texas but um, to just point them back here and say look you know at all of these productions that are going on or if they're above the line if they're a writer or director or producer bring your project here we have a rebate program that you can plug into and great amazing crew and resources that they can utilize and so we're seeing we're seeing the the, the um, cycle of people coming back to work bringing projects back and some even moving back which is amazing I mean I just had coffee with a lady the other day who l moved back for a project um, and you know decided to stay about to buy a house and yeah it's just it's um, it's really cool so there's a lot of a lot of filmmaking a lot of music making going on um, so yeah and then a lot a lot more with film uh, festivals and music festivals and I could go on and on. <laughs> Taylor Sosky, she's the director of the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. Um, more information and resources are available on their website, which is okfilmmusic.org. Looking ahead to next year and also kind of right now, what is in production? I know there are a couple films in production, right? Right. Uh, actually, today I believe uh, Wildlife might be wrapping. Okay. Uh, they have been here. Uh, that's uh, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Carrie Mulligan with Paul Dano directing. That was. Let uh, me let me ask you about this because nice Jake Gyllenhaal up in mm -hmm. uh, the Enid, perhaps part of the state. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Let me ask you this, because your office sent out a release saying, hey, we, we want people to be respectful of ongoing productions, no matter who is in this production, but you may recognize some people. Right. How is the response of Oklahomans when you ask for some courtesy? For the most yeah. part, are people fairly respectful or? The phone call is quite. Oh my goodness, down there's Jake. <laughs> yeah, the, I think the social media and, and the phone calls quieted down a little bit. Um, it, it's it, it they have to our community they have to respect and I know they do respect them but it's also exciting when you see somebody or you think somebody's in your town and you want to tweet it or whatever and is that Walmart for goodness it, sake yeah. like, it, I'm not gonna get starstruck ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean it is exciting um, however I mean you have we have to respect their privacy um, and in order for them to get their work done it's yeah. very expensive to make a movie. Every right. minute counts, and uh, you've been on a set, you know. You yeah, can't. Selena uh, Gomez went through the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there were days on set where she'd be there with, you know, her bodyguards or whatever. But there were also um, people that I knew that that were saying, "Oh, my little sister and her friends, or she's going to be here today," or you know, I can't imagine <laughs> like right. what that's like. So yeah, so. Um, and then we have another, uh, we talked about it last week, I Can Only Imagine. Mm -hmm. It's based, based off a song. song called I Can Only Imagine. And so um, they've been here rolling cameras all month. They will uh, uh, bleed into January a little bit. So um, they're uh, really engaging the community. Um, they have a lot of big concert scenes, obviously, for that. So, um, And we have an animated feature going on in Tulsa um, with a local native producer, Jason Berman, and then he's partnering with Steelhouse Production, which is a digital effects company in Tulsa. Cool. Um, cool. And there hasn't been a whole lot of information. We're about to send a press release out for that, but it's been um, underway, and we're excited about that. Um, we have another one wrapping in Bartlesville. Um, there's so we have four going on okay. right now, and then we literally have like six between January and April that are starting principal photography in 2017. So it's a lot, lots of Good paperwork and lots of, lots of um, support. That's what we do is support and, prov and connect, you know, the resources, just connect all the resources that Oklahoma has to offer. So, you know, it's amazing, though, when you talk about connecting and supporting, you two hadn't met before this yeah, morning, yeah, right. yet you have so many connections and people mm -hmm. that yeah, mm -hmm. that's similar, you know, contacts. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably the case with a lot of people in mm -hmm. the creative field. It's like, hey, I know this person. You should meet this person, and then right. That's what it's all about. I it mean, builds. and and we all know that in this industry. I mean, in film or music, um, that's what I love about this job and this office. Um, and coming home to my home state, it's so fun to just connect people. Yeah, um, she was born in Ada, and uh -huh. I grew up in Ada, yeah. and <laughs> she knew my brother Zach, and just a lot of um, a lot of other fun connections. So yeah, that's crazy. so that's I love cool. it. Um, you had mentioned um, staying connected with our office and going to our website, mm -hmm. so I appreciate that. Um, and just 
we'll wait until January, um, but we are launching a new website. Oh, look it's out. Be extra Breaking extra news cool. right and left during this <laughs> right, segment. Right, right. Um, we'll continue doing our monthly newsletter, which we always put great um, information in for people to connect to, and then our social media. And then we're also going to be launching, it'll be, it'll be, we'll announce it as we do everything, but um, a really cool uh, video series that will spotlight filmmakers and music makers cool. working Good idea. in Oklahoma. Um, just to help um, help further our message so about Oklahoma. So. Very good. Again, that website, uh, okfilmmusic.org. Let's move ahead. Last time I saw you perform, Chelsea, was at the Farmer's Market uh, J.D. McPherson show there. I walk in, you're mid-set, voice is just soaring, which sounded fantastic Thank in that you. place. Um, what What's new with Chelsea Cope in the music scene? Because if you follow Chelsea on social media, it seems like you're always creating. You know, at yeah. home, kicking back with the dog, writing a song or something. <laughs> yeah, he's my biggest fan. Um, I make a joke, though, if I hit a wrong note or, you know, whatever, he leaves the room. So that's a bummer. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign. Yeah, it's a sign. But it's you have a, a new band, Vonna Pearl? Yeah, Vonna Pearl. Um, so I've been working on my first ever full-length solo record for the last probably eight months. It's been slow moving, but um, I wanted it to be that way. I wanted it to take my time. Um, and Taylor Johnson, who I'm in Vonna Pearl with, has been tracking it for me at Lunar Manor, which is Graham Colton's studio here in the city. And uh, while I was in the studio one day, he asked me to sing on a song of his, and we had never sung together before. So, um, you know, before you leave, can you sing on this song? So I did, and we looked at each other and we're like, our voices sound really good together. So it escalated from there. It happened really quickly. We, we formed Vonna Pearl, and um, we're lucky enough to have some guys that we know. Um, Is there any the significance city. behind the name Vonna Pearl? Is this a combination? It's actually of his uh, his great grandmother's name. Okay. Mm. Which I thought was really neat. So um, so from then on, we we have a couple managers now that are kind of taking the reins for us um, and making things happen. So a lot is going to be uh, happening in 2017. <laughs> Look forward to some Vonna Pearl music coming up next year. You just recorded a session with Nathan Poppy, our Nathan Poppy here, uh, entertainment editor with the Oklahoma. He does the B-dub sessions with uh, Jonathan Fowler. And how'd that go? It was awesome. Yeah, it was so dreamy. Um, Christmas time, they had all these lights hung up. I haven't done a V-dub session since I think maybe it's been a few years. So and, and the so gist of this is one. local musicians mm -hmm. VW van, Nathan with a camera at the front. It's Squeezing the phone in booth, everyone. right? <laughs> yeah, it was, it's interesting. Just uh, you and your instruments and other people in that tiny van. It's uh, You really get to know each other in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, then you appeared out. on uh, Black Watch, as we mentioned off the top of this, the uh, sixth Christmas album, and that is the song you will be playing for us now, which yeah. is? Um, it's called Holiday Party. It's uh, basically just about all the love that goes... Uh, in the air whenever the holidays are around and going to a holiday party and meeting someone and and it talks a little bit about you know the drinking and the bad decisions stuff like that so <laughs> it happens it happens, it happens. Uh, and this is an original that you wrote yeah I some did, of these I did. songs on the album are covers but some are originals and mm -hmm. that includes yours yep it sure is i think it's my first ever christmas song to write so mm. special one. Right, unlike the good. grinch i guess i don't know well chelsea we'll let you uh, take it away cool thanks It's snowing outside my window And cars are parked all the way down the street But I don't want to go out tonight I want to stay warm inside I don't want to go out tonight, but this feels right, oh it's Christmas time. We are going to a holiday party, decorate the tree, our eyes meet and you move slowly over to me. It's been a long 
time since I've seen your face last year and all this time I thought you never knew I was here but I don't want to go out tonight but I saw you in the liquor store line I don't want to go out tonight but this feels right oh it's Christmas time we are going to a holiday party decorate the tree our eyes meet and you move slowly over to me we are going to a holiday party where to love unfolds only for tonight let's paint the streets and go Chelsea Cope, ladies and gentlemen, uh, which, by the way, I looked it up. It's officially called a Black Watch Christmas Volume 6. Volume 6. Volume, volume 6. You can find Chelsea Cope <laughs> on that album. One last question for you, Chelsea. Upcoming performances. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty low-key right now until I get the record finished. But um, something fun that a lot of lo local musicians and I do every year is... Um, this, uh, this thing called Come Sunday. It happens at our friend John's house in his living room. Every year it's a different entry fee. This year it's canned food. Very nice. Um, and so we always try to help out in the community in some way with these shows. Uh, so I think it's about seven of us. Uh, I know it's uh, myself, Samantha Crane, uh, Chase Kirby, John Calvin. Um, so uh, lots of people. And it's awesome. It brings us all together to do a couple Christmas songs each. And we, and we collaborate and it's, it's a lot of fun. So. Sounds great. Well, congratulations on, on that song. Well Thank done. Uh, by the way, when you're putting together a Christmas album, how far back do you have to record this? <laughs> oh, man. It was in July. So how do you get in the Christmas And I went spirit? to Walmart and bought lights. <laughs> <laughs> That's Maybe eggnog wasn't available yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I did. I set up some lights in a room and, and listened to a couple of Christmas songs to get in the spirit and just like turned off all the lights and just pretended like it was Christmas time. So it worked, I think. <laughs> cool. Great stuff. Yeah, Beautiful song. Thanks, Chelsea, guys. great to see you again. Yeah, you too. Tava, thanks so much for the interviews this year. Let's keep yes. it going next year. Yes, I look forward to seeing you in January. And one more big just shout out and thank you to all of our partners this year um, with Studio Oklahoma, which we launched. Mm -hmm. We've talked about all of the film festivals and music festivals and all those relationships that we've built. It's been an amazing year. So Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to yeah. all of our partners and all of our friends. And new friends. Cool. <laughs> Happy holidays, friends. ladies. Yeah, you too. likewise. Thanks.